Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,161. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest calling in all the way from Romania, Andre Mihailov. Andre, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Mark, I'm buckled up, full speed. Let's go. All right, great. Andre Mihailov is the creative director for the Romanian edition of Forbes magazine. He's also an accomplished automotive photographer who specializes in scale model photography. He runs his own creative studio in Bucharest titled GB Media, and GB stands for Good Business, as his focus is on providing clients with good, if not great, service from a great team with borderless creativity. I like that, borderless creativity. Andre started his business 15 years ago working with famous photographers from around the world, honing his crap, and today he's working on a special project titled One Big Small Garage, using highly detailed model cars to create unique photographs. If you step into Andre's office, you'll find yourself surrounded by a huge collection of model cars. So he's he's just a big kid at heart. So Andre, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Please take a moment, share a little bit more before I jump into the questions about your career and your passion for photography and automobiles. Well, first of all, hi, Mark. Hi, everyone listening to Cars Yeah. First of all, of course, thank you for having me as a guest in your show. You're welcome. It was really an honor for me to be among your automotive enthusiasts. As you mentioned, I'm four years old, and uh, I say around 30 years younger. I'm from (laughs) Bucharest because, you know, people are saying this. Oh, you have uh, cars here in your office. Oh, your son, what he's saying about this? Okay. (laughs) But uh, I tell them uh, there are not toys. (laughs) Okay, so I'm from Bucharest, Romania. I'm a creative director, as you mentioned, and a professional photographer. It all started, like all the photographers are saying, when I was a kid and I got my first camera. And it was a Russian camera. It was uh, called uh, Smena. It was um, very popular those days for beginners, you know. Mm -hmm. But of course, it got broken since I was a very um, curious kid. Because I wanted to see how things work, how they can ah, be Ah, you took it apart. Yeah, yeah. And I even got electrocuted one time. Not oh, my gosh. Camera. No, no, no. I was trying to fix a, a wooden lamp or something like that. I got my finger in there. It was plugged. Yep. I was in a second, two meters away from the from the lamp. But thank God I'm still here talking with you. So Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I tell you what, we're going to have some fun learning about you. And I really want to learn a little bit about this project and about What got you into shooting small model cars and all of the things that you're doing that involve your passion for cars? But first, as we continue on your journey, I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote or a mantra. This is a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars, yeah. So, Andre, take the wheel. Well, Mark, uh, I was thinking about uh, an inspirational quote, but honestly, I'm not really an inspirational quote guy, but, but... I do have a book that is filled with inspirational words, I will say. And for me, for me, it is the Holy Bible. And it is, it is the book that uh, changed my life and that leads me all the way, you know. Uh, meeting my beautiful wife changed my life for good. And uh, I started to realize that there is a plan for every one of us. So if I say to... Um, if I have to give a quote that uh, shows how how my life has been in the past years, it is from the Proverbs in the Bible. It is, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Because if I look back at how my career began, and if I had taken all the decisions all by myself, probably I wouldn't have been here talking with you today, you know, about cars, because yes. there, were, there were times when, for example, I thought that the business will not work as we wanted to. And, uh, you know, suddenly you start to feel fear 
but there's always hope and faith, you know. You know, yes. faith faith doesn't make things easy for sure, but it makes them possible, at least for me. Absolutely. You know, I love the the concept of having faith and whether you're a religious person or not. It's so important in your success in whatever you do is having a belief, having a faith exactly, exactly. in what you want to do. You know, one of my favorite quotes from the Bible is uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I just wish, I wish the whole world would act like that because we'd all be a lot better off. We'd all be a lot happier. But uh, uh, as we know, unfortunately, not everybody does believe in that. But I always think that's a, yeah. a great way to go through life. I do believe that too, because honestly... I have worked with a lot of people, even if it's uh, on the photography career, on um, you know my designer career, and mm-hmm. uh, you put a lot of trust in in people, and suddenly they show their true face, and they you get really, really, really upset and really disappointed with people that are not treating you like they should. You know, it's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it can happen. You know, my wife helped me one time. I've I've been fortunate like you. I met a wonderful woman 34 plus years ago. We've been married 34 years, and uh, she offers me a lot of great insight. And I used to get frustrated with people that didn't behave the way I thought they should, you know, were acting up or didn't treat me right or whatever it was I thought they were doing wrong. And one thing she said to me one day that really helped me get past that is she said, maybe they were never taught what the right thing to do is, like you were. Maybe they weren't as fortunate growing up in a nice family, a loving family. Maybe they weren't provided with the same opportunities. So you have to think that way a little bit. And it kind of helps you understand a little bit that, well, you know what? Maybe they just don't know that it's okay to be nice to people. Yeah, and I, exactly. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but you know what? Sometimes that's the truth and you don't know people's past. So I guess having a little faith in people, going back to your quote, is a nice way to go through life, too, and uh, maybe offer out a hand and maybe help them, and sometimes that can change their attitude a little bit. But, but, you know, sometimes people can't be changed, and you have to just, uh, I guess, turn the other cheek and walk the other way and uh, move on with your your day. Sometimes you do that, you know? uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yep, absolutely. Well, let's talk about a story that instigated your personal passion for cars. Obviously, you love cars. I have a a whole bunch of model cars, too. I think your collection probably... uh, it has gone way past mine, but I love having them because a lot of these cars are cars that we can't afford. So this is the way we can afford them and enjoy them. I always say I have about 20 Ferraris, but they're all little scale models. So tell us a pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were a car guy. Well, first of all, you have more Ferraris than I have. That's for <laughs> sure, because right now I'm, I'm looking around me and uh, there are some Ferraris that I wish I had. But yes. one is coming. I will tell you about it. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. Probably you heard a lot of stories, you know, from automotive enthusiasts, uh, starting with, I always grew up around cars, my dad's first car or something like that. But, you know, growing up here in Romania in the communist era, we didn't knew much about cars, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had our, uh, we pronounce it Dacia, it's Dacia car yes and yeah now it's a very famous car in europe it's, it's doing very well but you know not much about cars you know so i didn't grew up around cars not classic cars for sure then came the 89 uh, revolution here in romania and the uh, so-called capitalism and uh, we started to drive all kind of cars you know but still i wasn't into cars my brother was he, he used to have all these kind of um, automotive magazines. Uh, he was talking with my son, uh, with my son, with my cousin about technical stuff and everything. I only like to watch the pictures, you know, even if the classic cars were not too popular here. Yes. But one day, honestly, not too long ago, I was doing uh, research for one of our magazines here in Romania, and I was looking for um, expensive toys for boys, you know. Yeah, and and then I heard about the um, Bauer company from Germany, and uh, they are producing uh, some absolutely stunning Bugattis, you know. Uh, and the one that I, that I found out was a one twelve scale, so a big, beautiful Bugatti. It was uh, um, Type fifty seven SC Atalante yes. from nineteen thirty seven. Yeah. Yes. This is absolutely. 
a masterpiece. You know, uh, it has more than 1,000 individual pieces. And of course, it is limited to just, um, I think, 1,500 1, models. Mm-hmm. It costs around 105,000 uh, euros. So it's not, <laughs> it's not, not cheap. cheap. Yes. Yes. And uh, they sent us one piece from uh, this limited edition. And uh, honestly, that was the moment that changed everything regarding my photography and my passion for cars. Because honestly, it started my passion for classic cars. Since, nice. Since I always loved to sketch, to draw when I was little. And um, now I started to get interested in art books from the... Um, most popular and talented um, painters and artists, automotive painters. Uh-huh. So it was something inside me that I felt it started to to grow. You know, it's not really the technical side that drew my attention of cars, but more the design of the classic cars. And uh, every time I work on a layout for a magazine or I'm standing on my desk, start thinking to creating something, I put on my desk one model classic car. Well, uh, it's inspiration. Of, yeah, exactly, <laughs> because there is so much to learn from from the past, and there is a lot of inspiration indeed that you can draw from the from the classic car designers. You know, yes, honestly, yeah, yeah. honestly, in everything that you do, not only photography or it cannot be automotive related. You know, even if you are not automotive yeah. enthusiast, you know, I understand. I mean, you cannot look at a classic. Cadillac or a Ferrari and not to feel inspired in your work. I mean, it's, it's something beautiful that you don't see every day, you know? Right. And, you know, these model companies that make really high-end models, I mean, it's absolutely amazing to me. Uh, years ago, I used to sell and import some model cars, and I got to tour some of the facilities where they make some really spectacular model cars. And I was just, I was blown away by yeah. what I was seeing, the detail. And I love to have really nice models. Uh, some of them are prohibitively expensive, but, um, and I've also had, uh, like, for instance, Marshall Buck on my show who builds scratch built high end model cars that are absolutely mind blowing. I mean, yeah. just incredible cars. So yeah, great inspiration. Well, Let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down, Andre, and talk about a big challenge and a big failure you face along the way, because these are wonderful learning experiences if you embrace them that way. I know at the time they're kind of hard to embrace because they're very challenging, but tell us about maybe one experience that really kind of uh, was a challenge for you and how that helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your career or your business or your life. I was thinking about huge challenges so far, but I think that I'm still waiting, you know, for those huge challenges. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe if uh, Jay Leno will call me one day to photograph yeah. some of his cars, you know, or there you Jerry go. Seinfeld, you know, will want to have his Porsches photographed, probably before a photography art book that I will make the design for it, you know. That will be something, you know, like a challenge, like a huge challenge, you know. Sure. But hard times, like real hard times, these were in my personal life more when you know when my mother passed away of course it was a very difficult a very difficult time time for me because she was the one raising us me and my brother and we all been together through rough times you know uh, in my childhood in a way she was the one preparing us for the difficult times in life but also for these huge challenges that i'm still waiting for but Honestly, nothing really prepares you for something like like this when when my mother passed away. But I thank God again for my amazing wife because she's been there with me and she knew exactly how to heal my soul. Because it is crucial in it is crucial in life to have to have someone there with you and for you. You know, even 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 if it's your personal life or the business life, you know, I learned that you cannot do anything on your own in this life we yes yes we, we we live in these very strange times you know when 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 the people have become like so self-orientated but not in a good way i think you know all those you can do it by yourself you there is one other one you are the architect of your own life everywhere you look is this you 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 only you you know like five thousand friends on facebook uh that needs to see your breakfast, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> 100,000 followers on Instagram to show them 
I don't know, your sunset picture. We don't know how to enjoy life anymore, and we don't know how to how to take care of ourselves anymore. So, well, I'll tell you, Andre. Here's here's what I would answer to that. First and foremost, I I my condolences for losing your mother. I lost my father a year and a half ago. We just lost my mother in law this year, and yeah, thank goodness I have my mom still, and she's doing well. But um, difficult, difficult times to lose a parent for sure. But one thing I'll share with you that maybe sheds a little uh, highlight or a positivity on the concept of the me, me, me concept, and I, and I understand fully what you mean by that, is, you know, I've talked to 1,100, and now you're my 61st guest here. It's a lot of people to share their inspiration with and share what they've learned in life. And one of the things that repeatedly comes through is that what makes us happiest as human beings, is when we are helping others. And it's it's a deep, I think it's a genetic thing, it's a human thing, that if you figure that out in life early enough, and you find a way to have a career or a life or a path that does that in some way, it doesn't mean it's bad that you get paid for it, but if you can figure out a way to do that, you will be happier. And I've got 1,161 people now to prove it, that have been guests on this show. So I think, um, I think, yeah, I agree with you in many, many ways, but in the other respect is if uh, each of us can figure out a way to help others in some way. And that's what you're doing with your career. You're a graphic designer, you're a photographer, you're bringing joy to others through the images that you create. And that does help others and inspire others to maybe take the same task. Maybe a young child sees your photographs and picks up that first camera and starts exploring what you learned to explore when you were young as well. So keep the faith yeah, on exactly. mankind, Andre. And uh, I'm so happy you found that woman in your life to heal you, as you said, because uh, definitely uh, that will help you uh, get over. Well, you never really get over the death of a family member, but will help you live forward and live in your mother's memory uh, in the way she wants you to live. And I, I know that she wants you to be happy. And I agree with you, you know, on the positive side, you know, of helping others, because this is what I want to do, you know. There I you want go. to help others, you know. Um, because that's exactly what I was saying, you know. The young people, at least this is what I see around me, they feel like they don't want anyone to teach them what they need to do, what to do and how to do, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why, because we grew up like this. We always had our models in life, you know, someone there to show us this is good, this is not good. Uh, For a photographer, you know, the multi-photographer, you always look to see what others are doing, you know, what... mm, So always, and I agree to always help the others. Absolutely. And I think within the case of maybe some young people, uh, they just need to learn that. They haven't learned it yet. They weren't taught. And it's our job as as the old folks. Now you're a lot younger than I am, so I'm not going to call you old because you are young from my side of the fence, but uh, is for us to teach those young folks that that is the real way to happiness. It's not about self-serving or exactly. having the best car or the best purse or whatever it is that you think is going to make you happy, because those things in life will not make you happy. I guarantee it. I've learned from so many people that that's the case. Well, let's shift gears and go to the other end of the spectrum. I'd love for you to share what I call kind of a career aha moment, a time when the headlights come on and Kind of drive you down a new path, a new way. I I think you shared a little bit one when you saw that first model car and it kind of woke you up a little bit. Is that your aha moment or is there another one you'd like to share? There are some aha moments, but once again, the big one I think is still waiting just around the corner. But I will get back a little bit in time. And uh, there there was another moment that got me into this, you know. When I was visiting Amsterdam with my wife and um, one day... We were riding the tram. Suddenly, but suddenly, we decided to to get off and to walk to visit the botanical garden. We just passed by and we said, "Oh, let's let's go and see that. It must be beautiful." But the moment we got off, I saw a classic car restoration showroom. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was there. I don't know why it was there, but it was there. there Serendipity, plan, they know? call that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we got in, and I absolutely. I was shocked to say so. It, I didn't saw the beautiful cars in there because there were some classic cars fully restorated. And But my eyes were fixed only 
at the walls of the showroom. And I will tell you why. Because there were everywhere cabinets filled with scaled model cars. And I forgot completely about the, the amazing, you know, Ferrari and Porsche display there. I was looking only at the models. And a very young man approaches, and um, his name was uh, David. I still have, uh, have this his business card. And he told us that this is the complete collection of scale model cars that belong to Mr. Peter Monteverdi, a Swiss car maker and the creator of the brand uh, Monteverdi. He passed away in uh, 98, but uh, he left uh, one of the largest collection of uh, 143 scale model cars in Europe. Can you imagine that in that showroom were displayed more than 11,000 model cars? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> his, his entire lifetime collection, you know, and, and soon I learned that David, in fact, is the owner of the um, classic sports cars Holland, it's called, and they're doing restoration works for some of the most beautiful classic cars, of course. I told him about my new passion for classic cars because I already discovered the Bugatti and everything started and uh, for model cars. And I asked him if he's selling pieces from the collection because I was saying, oh my God, I will buy a lot of, of this. At first, he told me that uh, he wants to sell the entire collection as it is. Of course, the value was around uh, 500,000 euros. I'm not sure, sh sure how, but while we were admiring the models, uh, but of course the real cars as well, David came to me and told me, pick one car from the collection. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, what? 11,000 scale model cars, pick one. <laughs> it, I mean, uh, we only have a few days in Amsterdam, we need more. Yeah, yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah, and I don't know why, but my eyes were fixed on a model of a um, Fiat racing car. I learned uh, later that it was built by Sir Ernest Aldridge. It captured in 1924 the world land speed record of uh, 146 miles per hour. He modified at that time the car, uh, he lengthened the car using parts from a London bus, and uh, he added an aircraft engine. So it was a mad car at that time. That was well, what I love, of course, after David decided to sell it to me with 15 euros. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, it, there you go. What a nice, yeah, but a nice thing he did for you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. at that time, it was the only model car missing from the collection when I left. <laughs> the, there you go. <laughs> and, and I even joked about it, saying that one day I will get a call from a very, very rich guy asking me if by any chance... You know, I have a Fiat. Yeah, model. the missing car. <laughs> yeah. He bought it miss all. It is only one. That is, that is funny. I'll tell you, Andre, uh, go back to my guest number 942 on Cars Yeah here. Mike Zarnock, he has 30,000 Hot Wheels in his collection. World record, Guinness Book of World Record collector. Yeah, 30,000 toy cars. Isn't that insane i mean it's just yeah, incredible yeah it is. well let's let's talk a little bit about your first special car is there a first car in your life that you'd like to share a little story about my first real special car yeah uh, of course we are talking scale model cars here i mean it might be the bugatti yeah. but um, very special to me honestly are the model cars that my wife offered to me you know mm -hmm. she's not into cars she likes the 50s cars, but all the models that I have from her are the most precious ones, you know. For example, I have uh, an OD front uh, 225 Roadster. It mm -hmm. is a very classic one. It's built by a, a company in Germany, CMC Model Cars. Uh, yes, they do wonderful work. Yes, yes. They are building, I mean, some of the most highly detailed model cars on the market. And um, I have a few of them. Some of them are still waiting to be photographed. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, uh, no doubt, uh, yeah. no doubt, we'll see those in the future. Now, have, have you ever sold a model car? Do you have any seller's remorse about a model car? No, no, no. I don't have a model car that I sold, but there are many that I wish to add. You know, in yes, the future, of, course. To sell, of course, because there's. Uh, in fact, one of them will arrive soon, and it is a uh, Ferrari D50, also from CMC 
It's nice. the one dropped by uh, Juan Manuel Fangio back in yeah. 1939. So. I got a few of those CMC models myself. They do a really nice job, and they're somewhat affordable, too. I mean, some people would say three, four, five hundred dollars for a model car is crazy, but uh, there's some very expensive model cars out there. Well, let's talk about what has you excited and fired up today. I'd love for you to share a little bit about this project, One Big Small Garage. What's that all about? Well, One Big Small Garage, this project started uh, not too long ago. You know, I mean, um, I had all this scale model cars here. I was doing photography, automotive photography, but not scale model cars. So uh, this is the project that I'm working on right now. And um, honestly, I see myself doing this project even when I will get old, you know, because <laughs> probably retired to our countryside house that we dream about it, you know. It is real special since, um, you know, I can enjoy almost every car, like you said, that was ever built. And I can show it to everyone, to the world, in a new and interesting uh, light, you know. I uh, I realized that this type of photography makes you feel like you are the classic car designer and you and you are trying to discover new shapes, new angles, new faces of the car that no one has saw before. So the images that I have produced so far are uh, are getting a lot of uh, of attention, and um, I would really love to organize honestly a few exhibitions and to produce more fine art prints. You know, some of the images uh, will be soon displayed in the Lumitrix Gallery in London, by the way, and wow. they are yeah they are really interesting in having some of my work. You know, some of the images of the Audi of the Audi car. And uh, Talbot Lago that I also have, uh, and it's a very also from CMC, very beautiful. Is there a place where listeners can go to see an example of what you're what you're talking about here? Well, right now I am on Instagram. It's one big small garage. So um, I will prepare the the website for this project, and uh, of course, if you'll be in London. You will see, you will see fine art prints of of this. But um, everyone interested, you know, we can get in touch uh, by uh, by email. All my details are are on Instagram for now. Very cool. So, very cool. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. Here's a very introspective question for you, Andre. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car sitting in a garage, what would you be and why? Probably I will go uh, with the fifties. American cars, you know, I love them a lot, but not one in particular, you know, but I will be a little, a little from all of them because that was a time when creativity really had no boundaries. I mean, real creativity, beautiful creativity. And um, the famous car designers were very courageous uh, at that time, really brave people, you know, but maybe one day, maybe one day when I will have the, the time, of course, to sketch more. I will sketch this concept car of me and I will get back to you because probably... probably <laughs> I'm looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm a concept car, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm going to hold you to that, Andre. I'm going to be watching my mailbox or my inbox for that sketch of yours because now I'm really curious. And when you do that, I'm going to share that with all my, my Facebook followers and Instagram followers and uh, say, check out what Andre's figured out what he is. I will do that for sure. Okay, probably great. Probably it will be a convertible, you know, because my four years old, old son likes convertibles. But, of course, I will need to find the right name for the car. But it will be a real cool car. I am a real cool convertible car. You, you <laughs> get to work on that. I, I'm looking forward to that. Well, Andre, up next is the last lap before we put the pedal to the metal. Let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. Everyone who knows me knows I'm really picky when it comes to my cars and keeping them looking new. I'm a huge fan of Covercraft floor mats. I've protected my vehicle with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft floor mats. They will protect your vehicle's factory carpets from daily abuse, weather, pets, children, weekend adventures, and those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and stylish way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft floor mats come in a wide variety of styles, materials, and configurations, all designed for maximum protection. In addition to Premier Plush and Berber Custom Floor Mats, you'll also find cargo liners, canine cargo area liners, dash covers, and sunscreens. Enhance your vehicle's looks while protecting the factory finishes with easy-to-install and easy-to-clean floor mats. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com 
and tell them Market Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. What's every automotive enthusiast dream? To design and build that perfect garage. My friends at Metron Garage are a group of creative talents who've combined their passion for cars with their careers in architecture. Their service includes unique garage design and state-of-the-art fabrication. They will create the coolest custom garage for you and your vehicles. Metron Garage's system features fully engineered commercial-grade material and structural framing that's stronger than traditional construction. Their designs are pre-engineered to meet your building codes for fast, bolt-together construction. With over 25 years of experience, you'll see a 3D rendering to visualize your custom garage and the final structure will fulfill all your storage needs. Contact Metron Garage today and begin realizing your dream garage. Go to metrongarage.com. That's metrongarage.com. Garage is built for discerning enthusiasts. Where it's not just a garage, it's where your dream garage comes true. All right, Andre, we are back. We're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Well, this was not really an automotive advice, but it applies, you know, to automotive photography because I'm an automotive photographer. So I will give this advice because Rick Salmon, the famous photographer, once said the name of the game is to fill the frame. So for any photographer, <laughs> especially beginner, this is like, let's say, rule number one, you know. Yep. Also, also from another photographer, I got this, get on your knees when you don't see the picture. Because this is about the, the angles that you can discover when you are photographing cars, you know. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you really want to take cool, cool shots of cars, always get on your knees. Uh, yep. mm, Stay in very strange position, even if people will look like you like, oh, what's this guy doing? You know, I was doing that a lot of time. I had a guest on the show as a photographer who said, bend over and look between your legs back at the car you want to shoot to get a different perspective. So I think your friend's advice is very good one. Yeah, get get some different angles. Don't just stand there. Get up high, get down low, uh, lay on your belly, whatever you need to do. Now, how about a personal habit? Is there one that you'd like to share that you believe has helped contribute to your successes? I'm always cleaning my desk. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, like I said, putting a beautiful classic model car in front of me. Even if I'm photographing another car, I need to be surrounded by, by, by classic cars, you know. So I like to keep everything clean around me. So this will help everyone think more clear, more focused, and uh, you don't want to see my brother's desk. I, you know, I'm chuckling because, Andre, I'm like you. I'm a tidy guy. Everything needs to be in its place and organized. My wife's kind of the opposite. And so whenever I think I'm doing her uh, good by going in and cleaning up her desk, oh, my gosh, all I do <laughs> is get in trouble. I've learned not to go do that anymore. That's a bad thing. So, you know, some people operate differently, but I agree with you. I like having a clean, tidy desk. It kind of helps unclutter my mind, helps me focus a little better. Now, how about a resource? There are a lot of great resources these days. Is there one in particular you'd like to share? Well, I would say if you like scale model cars and if you want to do photography, automotive photography, go check the manufacturers, the um, like CMC, you know, like Brooklyn models. These are from from UK. They, um, They do, I think, the the most beautiful 143 models that I have ever, uh, uh, that I ever saw, you know, uh, they are they are completely amazing, and they are doing everything in UK, in Bath, not China or anywhere else, and uh, they are building white metal models. So when I first hold in my hand a 143 scale Brooklyn model, I was like, oh my god, it's so heavy. Oh yeah, yeah they're incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah very yeah. high quality. So, I've got some so, of those too. So check check the model cars manufacturers, check the, uh, their models, like. Exoto from US, you know, I'm, I don't have one Exoto, you know, but they are doing, I think, some of the most beautiful model cars. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, there is also an independent artist that I discovered and um, I photographed some of these cars, model cars. His name is Ilario Chiera. It sounds Italian, mm-hmm. but he's French. He is really an artist. Cool. Ilario. 
Ilario. If you say, if you search Ilario scale models, you you will see the most the most beautiful the most beautiful. Model. How do you how do you spell his name? Is I L A R I O. Ilario. Okay. Ilario. Okay. Awesome. Great. Ilario, but his friend. His friend. You know. There you yeah. go. There you go. <laughs> and always. Keep one eye on Mark Green, you know? <laughs> well, I don't build any model cars anymore, but uh, I, I hope I'm spreading some inspiration here. That's for sure. But yeah. You bring together people from so, so many areas. and uh, Well, thank you. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Here we are talking the U.S., Romania, and uh, sharing our passion for cars. It's a great joy and a great honor. Now, if I could wave my magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, who would it be? I will have a coffee with uh, Jay Leno, Jerry Seinfeld, and Mark Green. <laughs> well, I tell you, those are two guys I sure wish I could get on this show. They are very hard to get to, so I, I try, but uh, that would be a fun conversation, and I would be honored to sit at a table with you and those two guys and talk cars, for sure. Yeah, but from the past, I would really love to meet you know the guys that their, their names are now car names, like Ferrari, Lamborghini. <laughs> Renault, Porsche, Royce, yes. you know, I mean. Yes, that would be a delight as well, for sure. Well, how about a book? Is there a book you've read that you think our listeners would enjoy? Well, I mentioned that book at the beginning. It is the Holy Bible for me. Yes, So yes. this is what my life is about. But uh, honestly, it has all the inspirational quotes we all need and everyone wants to sometimes people are getting quotes they 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 don't know um, they are from the bible and they say wow wow it's like of course of course there are many other books to recommend uh, most of them art books you know from the famous automotive illustrators like i like a lot carlo demand it's a, a german guy he lived uh, at the beginning of the 20th century or peter Helk, you know but I will say from photography, go check uh, Mr. Rene Stout from Germany. He's one of the masters of automotive photography. There Rene, you go. Rene Stout, yeah. Rene Stout. Awesome. Great. Well, listeners, you can find links to all these great resources that Andre has shared on his show notes page on the Cars yeah website. Just type his name, and I'm going to spell it for you, A-N-D-R-E-I, Andre. And Mihailov is M-I-C-H. A-I-L-O-V, or just type Andrea and then you'll find it on the Cars yeah website. All right, Andre, we are up to the checkered flag, and this last question could be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car in the world, not a model. I'm going to buy you the real deal, the real car to park in front of your house or in your garage and enjoy it. But there's a couple tricks to this thing. I should say rules. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other model cars with. Okay. That little trick's off the table. You have to drive it and enjoy it. There are no garage queens here. I don't want it parked. I want you enjoying it in Romania there in the countryside. Um, but I'll buy you any car you want. So what's it going to be? Well, I think I will go with the Audi front 225 Roadster that I got from my beautiful wife as a model car. Okay. Well, so if, you find that didn't... One, if you find that one, I would love to drive my my wife and son around, you know. And yeah. 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 Well, at least you didn't break the bank too badly. Now, let me let me just clarify this, because I have a feeling you're talking about the 225 Roadster. That's the 1935 ish model. Yeah. Yes. OK. Just wanted to check. OK. Yeah. That gets a little bit more expensive because those cars are a little I bit. Know. A little bit rare, but you know what? That's okay. You I, asked the question. <laughs> I did. I know. I asked that question of a lot of people here, but you know, I saw one of those cars on the lawn at Pebble Beach. Yeah. Um, beautiful car. It was white with a red interior, if I remember right. And I had never seen one before. And I was really, really surprised by it because I thought, wow, this, this is something really different, something unique. It's, it's quite long in the front, quite yeah, I know, I know. large. Yeah, yeah. In the front. So, uh, Wow. Well, you got great taste. What color would you like yours to be? Blue and gray. Blue and gray. Okay. Well, you know, you haven't made things too hard today. I'll get to work <laughs> on that. Andre, you've taken us on a great ride today. I've really enjoyed talking with you. I want to thank you for calling in all the way from Romania today at the end of a work week for you and I. Um, I wondered if you could offer us one parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that Audi 225 Roadster. I would say that always but always 
do not follow your dream until you have prayed for it. Ah. <laughs> you know, even nice. if it's business or personal life, you know, yeah. always put your trust in the one who can. That's my personal uh, uh, advice, you know, for, for everyone, because this is uh, how my life is being built so far. I so, said. And what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and follow along with you? I'm uh, on Instagram. Like you, you can find one big small garage on uh, on Instagram, and uh, soon, soon the website will be ready, and uh, we can we can have uh, all the I will have all the project there, and uh, with all the images and the ones to come. So I'm more on social media right now, and of course uh, my email address and phone number and. You know, these you days go. you can find anyone. <laughs> yes, you can. Well, listeners, I'll make sure I put links to all of these on Andre's show notes page on the Carja website. Again, Andre is spelled A N D R E I. Me, love, M I C H A I L O V is his last name. I'll make sure. And when you get that website up, you let me know and I will update your show notes page. Andre, thanks for calling in today and for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your experiences with the Cars yeah audience. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. It was this wonderful. has been great. Absolutely. You. you bet. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.